On this episode of South Hawk Computing, we're going to talk about glass inline fuses on an electric bike and how it could hamper performance. And that's coming up next. <laughs> What's going on YouTube? Dan from South Hawk Computing with an interesting issue with an electric bike and inline glass fuses. So pretty much we got our example here. It's our Gigabyte Groove. And this is what the battery looks like for said electric bike. Now the way the manufacturer decided to design this battery was that if the batteries misbehave in any manner, this fuse here, it's an inline glass fuse, would protect the whole bike itself from any sort of damage. So the issue that I actually seen once before on a previous YouTube video that another owner of a Gigabyte Groove had was, I noticed him saying that during his daily commute, he would have to stop and let the battery cool off because this inner glass fuse here would heat up and he would give it a chance to recuperate and cool off. So fast forward to my adventures to work one day where I got about two and a half miles away from my house and the fuse had gotten so hot that this fuse cap essentially melted on the entire enclosure and I could not remove it. And I can't even joke about this because it was so hot that when I went to go remove it, it literally burned my fingers. So there was no way that I was gonna be able to remove the fuse cap from the battery and it pretty much left me stranded two and a half miles away from my house. So I had to drag the entire bike home pedaling and this bike here is no fun to pedal when you don't have any electric power to assist you. We're gonna do a quick baseline here and do it before and after of what the temperature of the current fuse is. It's the ambient outside temperature, which is about 90, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. So we're gonna drive it for pretty much about a mile or two, and we're gonna see what kind of temperatures the inline glass fuse can rise up to. Okay, so we just concluded our two mile, a little bit more than two mile run here, and let's see what the gun says as far as our temperature is concerned. I saw 124, 134, 131, so obviously this fuse 145. I mean, this sucker definitely gets up 152, 170. Whoa, what the? So pretty much you saw that this fuse definitely gets super hot. Now to me, that kind of defeats the purpose here. Yes, the fuse is designed to get hot to melt the inner wire that's inside of the glass fuse. However, it's summertime. This is when one tends to ride an electric bike. I'm not gonna ride this bike in the winter, in other words. So I have an idea. I wanna switch out this glass fuse here and I don't wanna have to deal with worrying about replacing a glass fuse all the time if it pops. I want a better solution. So let's get started here. So here's the game plan. After seeing what this battery looks like when it's actually inside the bike, we're looking at either this side or this side here, perhaps installing this. So what we got here is a switch resettable fuse. And this one here is capable of doing 125 and 250 AC current or up to 50 DC volts at 30 amps. So what we're gonna do is we mount this switch inside the battery. I'm guessing either something like this or like this. Um, whatever makes more sense once we crack the battery open. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm not sure if you could actually see it here, but it got so hot that it melted all around the glass fuse enclosure. I mean, basically the plastic is all melted here. So yeah, this has got to go. As far as putting the switch somewhere, I think since the battery terminal for recharging is here, we're going to put the reset button right up here. Since we have this open too, what we're also going to do is put some ventilation holes because there's no way for any sort of air to come in or out of this guy. So we're going to do that as well. Yeah, let's get to this guy first, I guess.
That there is the world's ugliest soldering job. Nothing much more I could do because I broke the little U-clips on there, so, you know, and you got lemons. Hey, we got voltage. So I noticed there's no ventilation in this, so I'm gonna put a, put a hole in the top here on either side too, so if there's any heat buildup inside this enclosure, the former location of the glass fuse will be one area to get airflow, and then also the top. Triple checking, 50 volts, perfect. To recap, we put the resettable 30 amp fuse on the side because when the seat cover goes on, potentially it could be pushing on this button and that kind of defeats the purpose of having a button that can't pop out if there's an overload. So we did that and as well as we put a hole here on the very top as well as on the other side here to help any heat that may build up inside the enclosure to escape. And we hollowed out the location of where the previous glass fuse housing was enclosed in. So it could be minimal airflow that comes into this because basically what happens here is the handle will cover it, but there's still enough of a gap to get some sort of air. Time to see if this is gonna make any sort of improvement on the bike. Let's get back out there even though it's nine o'clock in the evening. Okay, so the prototype is in. As you can see, the reset button slash fuse is right here. So there's plenty of space for it to pop out if necessary, if it's ever popped. And on the side, we have a ventilation hole to possibly allow any heat that builds up inside this enclosure to escape on either side, as well as the old fuse location that we bored out. Basically, we made sure that uh, we have an additional source of airflow. The overall uh, hope here is that the air will enter here and hopefully escape out of the top of the battery due to its angle. Quick ambient temperature check, about 85. It's maybe slightly cooler, maybe 81 outside on a hot, humid summer evening. We're going to basically point the laser on that guy, the fuse itself, the metal part, and all around various locations to see if we see any increase in temperature. Okay, moment of truth time. Let's see what kind of temperatures we get. 82, 85. 82. We got a bit of a 90 here. Let's see. The results that came in, and as you just saw, that it significantly lowered the temperature of the overall battery, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I can't believe that the battery itself is actually cooler to the touch. What would happen is on either side of the battery, it would be extremely warm. Let's put it that way. In addition to that, we actually did this to a lithium ion pack that actually burned out on my way to work, as I was saying uh, earlier, where basically that guy got so hot that it fused the cap and made it impossible to really replace the glass fuse. So the cool thing is here that both of these batteries are benefiting from the resettable fuse. And it's probably because of the poor contact points on the enclosure for the glass fuse. And basically what happens is resistance builds up, the resistance builds heat, and the heat is just gonna pop the fuse. And in addition to that, when you have the resistance, it means you're not getting full power from the battery to the motor. And I noticed with both of these batteries now that I only have to give quarter to half throttle to get full speed on flat land, where prior it would be 75 to 100% to get it to get to the max speed of 20 miles per hour, which is super cool here. Interesting thing is I was able to get to work, which is about 11 miles uh, away from my home, and I typically consume almost 55 to 60 percent of the lithium ion battery getting there. This morning, when I did it, I literally only used 20 percent. So, in addition to not generating excess heat, getting more power to the motor, now I'm consuming less battery because I just don't need a lot more power to push this bike to its top speed, and that's fantastic. The battery will last that much longer. If you like what you see here, obviously give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, join our forums, it'd be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from South Hawk Computing, and as always, until the next time.